Hello again. I'm so glad that you have joined me for seven minutes of seed. Seven minute seed. That's what we're doing. And we're going off of our table talk card. I am Pastor Kate from rootbible.com. No, my husband is not with me. It's just me. And we do classes. And we would love for you to join us. We have a new class coming up called The Real You. It is super great for our kids, for ourselves to know the real us when we get saved, of who we become in Christ Jesus. You've got to check that out. Registering is free. You don't want to miss that. And where is that? That's at rootbible.com. So go check it out uh, while you have a chance and uh, see if that's not something that would work great for your family. Now, we are getting ready to put seven minutes on the clock. And that is because we have this is seven minute seed and we're going to talk about Galatians 5, 16 today. So let's go. Seven minutes of seed. Galatians 5, 16. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Now, in Handle with Care and every series, we remind those that are in class that we are three parts. We are spirit, soul, and body. So our flesh is the nature that is in tune with the dominion of darkness. That is this world. This world will be recreated because this one is under the dominion of darkness. God gave Adam dominion. Adam gave it to Satan. Satan is the God of this world. So when Satan is destroyed, guess what else? This world will be also. That's why our flesh cannot, our body that holds who we are, the real us, our spirit, cannot walk into the new recreated world that is the kingdom of light. We will be recreated. We will have, excuse me, new bodies, okay? So when we say Galatians 5.16, or when we help our kids understand this, but I say walk by the spirit, that's our recreated spirit led by the Holy Spirit, who the word of God says will lead us into all truth, which is the word of God. But I say when you walk by the spirit or walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Because we're three parts, did you know that our flesh or our soul, unrenewed soul nature can have desires that don't line up with the spirit, right? So a lot of times we read that and it goes right to like deep, dark desires, but it can be a simple, um, I just want to lie a little so I can get out of this situation, right? Uh, I can't make it. I'm busy. What? Why did I just say that? It's not even true, right? There was a desire of the flesh there to be excused from a situation um, without saying, I don't want to go. <laughs> or asking the Holy Spirit how I should respond. Um, I, I, I instead uh, carried out a desire of the flesh. So remember, a desire of the flesh is just a solical nature that is not redeemed. And I'm deciding to go my way or um, the old nature way rather than God's way. So a lot of times in our home, we like to ask the question, who told you that? So uh, when things come up like, I can't do that or... Um, so-and-so was mean to me and we say, okay, well, who told you that? Oh, well, I think they were mean to me. Okay. Well, did you tell them that? Uh, well, I came to tell you, I said, well, you are not a victim and they are not a bully. So you go to them and say, when you did this, it, it appeared to me that it, you meant this to harm me, to hurt me. Right. So communication is so big, but let that communication be led by the Lord, not your emotions. Right. So if it's led by the flesh or the desires of the flesh, someone is mean to you, your flesh goes, don't be mean to me. I'll be mean to you. Uh, and then their flesh responds. Right. And we see uh, the reaction of the world, uh, not led by the renewed, uh, spirit, which when we become new, you know, I don't know about you. I didn't get a whole new body. And we tell our kids this, right? When you became brand new in Christ Jesus, you didn't get a whole new body. You didn't instantly start thinking like Jesus that, that I know of, right? <laughs> but everything that Jesus had available to him is now available to me. But that doesn't mean automatically right now that he's also 
change my heart's desire, which might still be lined up with fleshly things, especially if I've been feeding on fleshly things, if I've been watching shows where relationships are developed unhealthily or dealt with um, in an unhealthy manner, if I am hanging around friends who deal with relationship not by the word, but by an unhealthy manner, then I'm going to be more tempted to easily carry out desires of the flesh right? I'm going to be more easily prone to listen to my flesh nature, my five senses and what they want over what the guidance of the spirit would say I need to do, think, say right now. Okay, so you can make that real in your home now. Is that your flesh acting this way? Does it make your flesh feel better when you respond that way? Was it fleshly or was it the spirit of God that led you to say this to dad or your sibling, right? This is taking the reality of who we are in Christ and, and putting everything around us through its filter. It is the only truth that exists. And for that reason, it's the only truth that we'll rely on on our home. And the truth is our Lord. Jesus is the word. And so if it doesn't line up, with the spirit-led truth, then what are we doing? We're probably fulfilling a fleshly desire, and that doesn't belong in us. That doesn't belong as part of our lifestyle. It's easy. The whole world follows their carnal fleshly desire. They don't know any better. They don't have another option. Their father is the devil. Before you were saved, your father was the devil, and you fulfilled your carnal nature under the dominion of sin and darkness. You were literally um, dominated by sin. But now you aren't, which means you can choose and not to carry out a desire of the flesh. And in fact, the more you walk by the spirit and the washing of the word, your flesh starts to respond to that new heart's desire that God gives us when we're in the word. We see things by his spirit clearly, and he gives us the desires of our heart, which now are what we pursue more than the flesh. And the spirits can so easily guide us because we continue to keep his word in us and the spirit leads us into all truth. And if his word is in us, it's much easier for the spirit to lead us in that truth than if it's not, which is why we believe it's so important that you start little. Get a memory verse a week into your kids. Memory verses are not done away with. They are gold. They are life, literally. They are seed. If you want any sort of harvest, it comes from the seed. You know, we, we minister to parents all the time that have children that are living out of the desires of their flesh completely. And we ask them, you know, what was your method for getting the word in them? And they're like, oh, we didn't want to force them to read the word because we didn't want them to hate the word. Would you rather them live by the desires of their flesh and under the dominion of, of, of sin? Like, what? You, did you not make them brush their teeth because that was inconvenient? Did you let them go to bed anytime they wanted because you didn't want them to get grumpy with you or not like you? Did you let them pick their dinner? You, you know what I mean? So when you put it in that perspective, you realize how crazy it is when we know what's available to us in Christ Jesus and we limit it from our kids in fear that we would push them away from God. That's a tactic and trick of the evil one. And we need to thwart that and start getting the word of God into their hearts one verse at a time and utilizing the word of God to correct and rebuke and build up all day, every day, and allow the word of God to do the work of a parent because he is a good father. All right. Thank you for joining me for seven minutes of seed. I hope you'll join me next time. Utilize this, put this into action that you may raise a family that walks by the spirit and does not carry out the desire of their flesh. Blessings until we meet again, overflowing, abundant blessings. All right. Bye-bye.